Hey guys, how's it going? Today, I'm going to be featuring the Massachusetts Bee. Now, if you couldn't already tell by the title of this video, this game does in fact come down to me killing off the entire enemy team in order to win. In classic World of Warships Legends fashion, my team is nowhere to be found. And in this game, more specifically, they can't be found because they're all at the bottom of the ocean. We did have a fail division on our team, which ended up bringing in a tier 5 ship into tier 7 matchmaking. However, we did also have another division of tier 7s, so hoping that they would be able to communicate well and help us win the game would counter the fail division. We are on Islands of Ice once again, and like I said in one of my previous videos, if you spawn on the right side of the map, you just simply push forward using the island chain going straight south. Doing so will allow you to push in with any ship and using these islands to protect yourself from the enemy middle spawn. And then the opposite flank will allow you to simply focus your fire on the flank in front of you. The enemy team gets spotted in front of us, a King George, Scharnhorst, and a Siegfried. Now the Siegfried is just charging straight in, and I do stop at this island to make sure that I don't go past and start getting crossfired from the middle of the map. The Siegfried is just charging straight in without any hesitation to slow down. So all I'm going to do now is slowly reverse because the last thing I want to do is allow him to get within torpedo range and take all of my health with those torpedoes. Now I'm not using propulsion mod, so slowing down and reversing when I did is very important because without propulsion mod, I won't be reversing at 20 knots and making him take that much longer to catch up to me. One of our friendly ships that has spawned with us charged in and bailed going to the middle of the map. And we have one more friendly cruiser on our left, which is a Kutuzov who has smoked up behind an island. Unfortunately, he's not in a position to help us out with this enemy Siegfried and help us kill him quicker. I am using a spotter plane instead of the secondary consumable in this game. However, I do think using the secondary consumable might have been more beneficial. Since all I'm doing right now is staying angled and shooting the ships that are just simply pushing, having that secondary targeting consumable, letting you get more accurate shots would definitely help you deal more damage and possibly set more fires. This Siegfried having an overmatchable bow and he's just charging in, he is taking a lot of damage and he does decide to bail and try to push our friendly Kutuzov. As my guns reload, he is turning away and I do try to aim for the stern and my shells land and I'm able to finish him off before he can do anything to our Kutuzov. After the Siegfried died and the Kutuzov's smoke disappears, the Scharnhorst does decide to actually turn around and disengage instead of rushing down our friendly cruiser and trying to kill him off. The King George that had also spawned on this side is nowhere to be found. So now we can just simply push back in and try to help our friendly cruiser kill off this enemy battleship as quickly as possible. So far, this game has started off to a pretty decent start, both teams losing one cruiser. Now as I push in, I do spot this King George, and since I am unspotted, I am going to try and turn my ship in order to get all my guns to bear, and as I shoot, I do go behind an island trying to go undetected so he can't retaliate. I get behind the island and I do go unspotted and now with that King George behind the island unable to shoot at me, I can help our Kutuzov focus down the Sharnhorst. Now with this friendly cruiser dying, this is where the steamroll starts happening. We lose two ships very quickly and now we are down three ships to their one. And my team will pretty much just start dying left and right without killing off any of the enemy ships. I start slowing down next to this island once again, just so that the enemies on the other flank can't shoot at me. And that allows us to put this Sharnhorst in a 2 versus 1 without him having any sort of team support. Another friendly ship goes down, and again, only one ship so far has died, which was the enemy Siegfried we had killed off in the beginning. 
I take a shot at this broadside Sharnhorst, and I get some pretty nutty dispersion there, and I am able to chunk him enough to kill him off. And now we finally have our second kill, and they've lost their second ship. The King George is just sitting behind those islands in their spawn, so I'm going to go forward and try my best to help my team on the other flank, since they are losing so badly. And after the Sharn Horse dies, we go unspotted, which gives us a bonus of not being spotted as we push around this corner. I take aim at the enemy Baltimore in hopes of death striking him since I know we can remove him quickly. Unfortunately, the shells are landing a little high and do miss the Citadel. I call target on him, hoping that our teammates can kill him off quickly because we do need to take some of their guns off the board in order to make this a much easier fight in order to win. One of our friendly battleships just starts yellowing in to the entire enemy team and it's a lion which if he just simply stayed back and shot his main guns switching between AP and HE as needed, he definitely would have been able to survive much longer. Although, his decision to just simply charge in is going to get him killed. After we kill off that Baltimore, we do have our third kill, and the enemy team has lost their third ship. With our Lion just charging in and throwing his ship away, and that friendly tier 5 Byron on the other flank being the last one, I'm starting to plan on how I would be able to pull this out as a win which would simply be using these islands in order to try and mitigate the engagements I take at a time, and if I can force a lot of 1v1s, that would allow me to have much easier engagements and have a much better chance at winning. So I do put my ship in reverse, and I am going to try and focus down this enemy Cheshire and the enemy King George that has started pushing up the island chain. The lion goes down, and now we are in a 3 versus 6, and I'm also expecting the Byron to go down very soon, which will leave us in a 2 versus 6, with the entire enemy team starting to push over to our side. I do need to hurry up and try and disengage, and force a 1 versus 1 with either this Cheshire or the King George that has started pushing back in. One of the reasons I do want to clear the King George and Cheshire is just so that I am not going to be in a threat of a crossfire, especially with the enemy team coming on that right side and then the King George on my left. The last thing I want to do is have to focus on two sides at once. Our friendly Kutuzov has smoked up and is actually helping us quite a bit with helping kill off a lot of these ships. One of the ships on the other flank is very low and I do just take a shot in order to make sure he dies and doesn't get into will to rebuild. Finally reaching this island I am now protected from my right side and now I just need to be careful of the enemy Cheshire and the King George that has been unspotted for quite some time. Unfortunately with the Byron going down nothing is spotting for our friendly Kutuzov. I definitely could have spotted for our Kutuzov at this point but that would have meant me risking myself being chased down by this Cheshire and being torpedoed since he is definitely pushing up to the island in front of me, especially knowing that the middle cap is no longer contested by him. We know he has left and is pushing the left side of this island, so we are just going to be patient and hope that he comes around broadside and we're able to kill him off before he can get any torpedoes off. Our Kutuzov is still sitting in his smoke and hasn't moved yet, and I think his smoke did run out, and he's just simply caught by the enemy ships that have pushed his smoke. Cheshire does come around the corner broadside, and I'm able to dev strike him relatively quickly, and as soon as I do, there's the King George that I know was pushing down the flank. And now I do have a 1 versus 1 with this King George, and I should definitely be able to kill him off. We know of the enemy ships that were left alive. The Wichita was full health, the Massachusetts was on very low HP, and we're not actually sure how much health the last enemy battleship has. Unfortunately, the Cheshire was able to launch some torpedoes, and I do take one on the belt. Fortunately, it did not cause a flood. 
Otherwise, if it did, I would have to damage con and then subject myself to King George HE spam, which definitely would not have gone well. Even when using Optimus Prime and building for fire prevention and having 40 second fires, I am unfortunately pretty much stuck on this island because if I push out, I will be shot at from the right. And if I reverse, there is that enemy battleship that is behind me. I pretty much just have to stay where I am just so that I am not shot from the other side and lose any more HP. That's unnecessary. Fortunately, as this King George does get to my broadside, he does still keep shooting HE. If he did switch to AP, I would definitely not have survived this and he would have just chunked me for so much. My salvo pretty much chunks him for the rest of his HP and my secondaries have set him on a permafire so he is definitely going to burn down. My spotter plane did spot the last three enemy ships. So we know the Massachusetts is pretty much around 13,000 health. The Carciello is about half health and we just need to kill off this Wichita as he's starting to YOLO around this corner. So pulling out a win is definitely very possible. We are using our final repair party. So we do need to kill off this Wichita very quickly. I'm hoping he does try to go for a drive-by, but instead he's actually just straight up turning in to go for a ram instead of any sort of intelligent play. I think he saw his entire team dying and just figured this was his only option to help his team win. Which in truth if he did get devstruck trying to do a drive-by, I definitely would have killed off their Massachusetts and then their Carciolo. 2200 base XP in a loss, and the fell division of Gneisenau and Bayern, the Gneisenau that brought the Bayern into tier 7, is at the very bottom of the team and did worse than his tier 5 divmate. The only thing worse than a fell division is the top tier in the fell division doing worse than the lower tier, and also seeing that the tier 5 and tier 7 is halfway up our team. We had a tier 7 and a couple more tier 6s did worse than our tier 5, which is an absolute tragedy if you ask me. It is really unfortunate, but it does happen. The only thing that I wish that didn't happen in this game was the Wichita ramming me. I think being able to kill off that Massachusetts and the enemy Carciolo would have just been one of the greatest games ever recorded. I do wish Brawling Commanders did have a ramming skill, because I probably definitely would have survived that ram but oh well it's all in the past and now all we can do is look to the future anyway i hope you guys enjoyed if you did leave a like and subscribe for more leave a comment down below for any other ships you want to see in the future but until next time aloha